Hi, I'm Quince, and welcome to the first in my series of reviews for Season 1 of The Playdate, Panic's handheld gaming console. Each week, two brand new games from different developers appear like magic on your Playdate system. Week 1's games are Whitewater Wipeout and Casual Birder, and they'll be available on your Playdate as soon as you turn it on! Let's start with Casual Birder. This is an adventure game designed by Diego Garcia, taking place in a world where taking photos of birds, aka birding, is the number one coolest hobby there is. You play as a mere casual birder protagonist who's looking to make a name for himself by taking the coolest bird pics. Along the way, you'll need to upgrade your camera, help out some random strangers, and put a stop to the nefarious deeds of a sinister birder gang. It's a little bit like Pokemon if instead of catching Pokemon, everyone was just all about bird photography. Also, you don't make the birds fight, you just take pictures of them. This is one of the more involved early Playdate games, certainly the most involved release during week one. Depending on what kind of gamer you are, I'd wager that this is the one you'll be spending the most of your time with when you first turn your Playdate on. The time to complete it fully is probably in the range of three to five hours, which might not sound like too much, but it's a pretty meaty adventure, I think, for such a tiny handheld. There are a lot of interesting areas to explore in the game, and a lot of NPCs to talk to, with funny, well-written dialogue. The whole game has a very tongue-in-cheek sense of humor that might not click with everybody, but it clicked with me, reminded me of Earthbound or Undertale, that sort of tone. Lots of weird, silly characters, like a sea captain in a fishing boat, uh, and a creepy photographer with highly questionable motives. To compare it to one more video game, Casual Birder reminded me of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening without the dungeons or the combat, but the general vibes of exploring a small town and beaches, running around fulfilling little tasks for NPCs, finding items, and that was sort of my favorite part of Link's Awakening anyway. Of course, the other big aspect of the game that I haven't talked about yet is the camera itself, because in addition to talking to NPCs, most of your gameplay will be trying to solve these little mini puzzles to coax birds out of hiding and then snap a decent photo of them for your birder book, your little bird encyclopedia. So using your camera requires you to turn the crank on the system itself in order to focus and get a clear shot of the bird. It's not a terribly difficult or essential mechanic. You mostly just rotate it until you can see them clearly, but it's cute. Uh, it makes you feel a little bit like you're using an actual camera and it feels appropriate for the system. Now, some of these birds can be tricky to find and sometimes even just figuring out how to progress in the main storyline can be a little vague. It's not quite on the level of old school point and click adventure games, but it sort of lives in that same world. There were a couple of parts I definitely got stuck on. Sometimes you really have to go around and just talk to everybody and think carefully about their dialogue because they will give you clues whether they be easy or difficult to understand right away. Uh, but sometimes what you're looking for is just hard to find. It requires a lot of poking around different areas. And once you realize what you were supposed to do, there's a couple parts that maybe should have been obvious in hindsight, but maybe the game didn't do a great job directing you into those areas. It's not the worst offender in terms of obscure puzzles, but some people could be frustrated by it. Fortunately, we have the internet, so you can always ask for hints online if you get stuck. That's what I did. Since Casual Birder will likely be the first game a lot of people play on their playdate, I think it's a pretty good intro to what the system can do. It proves that you can have something a little more involved with a compelling story and interesting characters, and it also demonstrates how the crank can be used to complement a game without overshadowing it. Not every single game for this thing needs to be all cranking all the time. It can just sort of live in harmony with the regular controls too. Uh, I love games with a sense of humor, and I also love Love adventure puzzle games. So this one was really perfect for me. It's exactly the kind of game I was looking forward to playing when the playdate was first announced. So I think it was a great one to start off with. Now, an argument can be made that Casual Birder doesn't do much to justify the existence of the crank, which is probably why it was paired up week one with the other game, Whitewater Wipeout. 
Whitewater Wipeout was developed by Chu Hai Labs, who also made the VR game Carve Snowboarding, which is kind of a neat VR snowboarding game, if you're into that kind of thing. This game, though, is about surfing, not snowboarding. You're a guy on a surfboard, you angle the crank in the direction you want him to move, and then when you're airborne, you can rotate the crank in circles to do 360 spins. And the more spins you do, the faster you'll go, the more points you'll score, the higher you can go in the air, so you can do more spins consecutively, and so on. Uh, eventually, a big wave will catch up with you, and the game ends. You might also get eaten by a shark if you spend too much time near the bottom of the screen. There's no story mode or anything like that here. This is a pure arcade style, high score chaser. One mode, you press start, the game goes, that's it. You do a bunch of flips, you rinse and repeat. Uh, I liken it to something in the spirit of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, except far simpler. There's only one type of trick you can do and the only combo is for successfully repeating that trick multiple times in a row but that simplicity is kind of perfect for a game like this on a handheld device like the Playdate. You can also hold up on the D-pad while in the air to go higher, which is really essential for getting enough air to do multiple spins in a row. A big part of the game is being able to accurately judge how many flips you can do safely without wiping out. Now, holding on to that D-pad while you're cranking the crank can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable, but this is probably not a game you're gonna be playing uh, for a very long stretch at a time. So ultimately, I don't think it's a huge deal if, you're, if your wrist or fingers start getting sore, you just put it down. At first, I was terrible at this game. I could barely crack like 30 points because I didn't really know what I was doing. There's no tutorial here. Uh, there's just some random hints that pop up anytime you lose. But once you do get the hang of it and really start cranking, you can pull off some impressive combos and scores. On paper, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of depth here. Eventually, you wrap your head around how to spin effectively, you get going faster earlier, and then you just kind of keep doing that over and over to get more points. There really isn't that much to it, but there is something about it that just feels good to do. Like literally physically feels good. And I think it, it really comes down to that crank itself. This is one game that feels like it really needs the Playdate to exist. If you took this same concept, just used a regular joystick to spin, for example, it wouldn't have nearly the same appeal. It's really satisfying to spin that crank successfully, and it somehow links up really well with the on-screen surfing action. And even though I'm still not really that good at the game, the leaderboards are well above what I can do, there's something about it that keeps pulling me back every once in a while. It's perfect for those times when you've just got a few minutes to play something, and I usually feel like I'm improving at least a little bit every time that I do. So if you are someone who loves the thrill of chasing after that high score, you could easily get addicted to this one. Whitewater Wipeout is super simple, but it's perfect for what it is, a bite-sized arcade game that does demonstrate the uniqueness of the crank in a way that most people probably wouldn't think of upon first seeing it. I don't think it's something you would immediately look at that system and go, oh, a surfing game, but it works. Uh, I think some folks might bounce off it early on because it does take a few tries to really wrap your head around it, while others just might not be into something that's so short and simple, but I do think it mostly accomplishes what it sets out to do, and it's a perfect complement to casual birder. Week one gives you a longer, more involved experience alongside something that's short and sweet with high replayability. It's a great introduction to what the Playdate can do. Let me know what you think of these games in the comments, and stay tuned for my reviews of all the other season one Playdate games coming soon.